So everyone knows this lady. It's it's salami croissant. I mean Kashami Sawant. Um what the actual fuck. But um she she's been working with what's her was a socialist alternative and the workers okay. people workers strike uh, back. That's that's what it is. Um workers strike back. So she wrote an article recently about her um work on the uh cast ban cast discrimination ban in seattle so seattle's working people won the nation's first ban on cast discrimination so um if you were paying attention last week savvy sabs did a stream um and she started out with this little thing introducing it so we will as well um if i can hit this and this and we'll watch this for a second. That we for for last like thirty to forty years, we have tried to educate Western countries about our plight. We have knocked the doors of the United Nations. We have knocked the doors of each and every human rights organization. History was written when we were there. We were here. We were here. We were here. We were here. <laughs> Which is why we think this is very historical. The law allows us to now speak, talk about things that are wrong. Without that, there's a fear of retaliation and people do not want to talk about it. So which is why we consider this as a really big moment because nowhere around the world, such an ordinance has been passed outside of India. Fantastic! <laughs> no, 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 this is... And I remember people from my community calling me slurs like crossbreed. They called me slurs like, you are a dirty blood. So when this ordinance passed today, I went close down to my childhood. Like I heard all these things being a, like a three-year-old or a four-year-old. I have those memories in my heart. ...of the city. Any offensive language that is disruptive to these proceedings... Councilmember Mosqueda? Aye. Councilmember Nelson? Aye. Um, will the clerk please read item one into the record? The report of the City Council agenda, item one, clerk file. I feel that like Seattle is the first city in all over US banning caste-based discrimination. I feel I'm lucky to be in this place. So, <clears throat> um, we'll get into what cash systems are in a bit but um yeah i do i do i, I am happy for them um yeah I, I i hope to see what prosecution might happen if you know this uh discrimination happens right like right. what's the what's the penalty for for said discriminating um that'll be interesting to see like who who's going to use this case first right like now that this is like when will seattle like when will those trials start to happen i'm i'm curious um but um we have a bit more um so this is an interview from uh that uh shama gave before this happened like just before, right? So we'll play that real quick. You who are just joining, uh, Seattle has just become the first city in the United States to ban caste discrimination. So let's go ahead and show you part of this interview with Shama Sawant, where she goes into a little bit more detail about this. So here we go. Let alone oppression has not even been acknowledged really 
by any city in the United States. We don't have statistical data for Seattle, but we do know anecdotally from many tech workers who have come to me personally and told me that they face discrimination. As uh, myself coming from a South Asian background, I grew up in India. I have been aware of the caste system, you know, painfully aware all my life, you know, throughout my childhood. And I know that I am in no, my life is in no way unique. Caste is ever present in India and it is important that we acknowledge it. This is absolutely the result of a grassroots efforts by many organizations alongside my socialist city council office. If you are watching this and you live in the Seattle region and you care about banning caste discrimination, then you have to be with us on the front lines. You cannot be, uh, you know, you cannot just be watching this on the internet. Hello and welcome to the News Minute. In a move that could ensure greater protection for Dalit workers in United States, particularly in Seattle city, one of its council members, Shama Savan, has proposed a legislation to ban caste-based discrimination in the city in work. So this was actually before it passed. This was mm -hmm. right before it passed. So I want to go ahead and scoot up just a little bit here. That's why I really appreciate you covering this story because we need support not only from all across America, but all across India as well in order to make sure that we put pressure on the city council to vote yes on this. And as far as your question about is it rampant, actually that's part of the problem, you know, that caste as a source of discrimination, let alone oppression, has not even been acknowledged really by any city in the United States. So if we are able to win this, actually this will be historic, not only because this will be the first time in Seattle that caste will be legally recognized as a source of discrimination. Let's pause there for just a second. If you notice, Shama Sawant said, we put pressure on the city councilors to get this legislation through. And it did pass. So this was right before it passed. So this is what I said before about having that grassroots movement on the outside, which is what they had there in Seattle. Shama has a lot of experience with this, obviously. They had a grassroots effort to put the pressure on the city councilors in Seattle to get this legislation through. Shout out to my comrade JB says, congratulations to our family in Seattle. And Nick from RBN is actually gonna be in Seattle soon to help Shama with workers strike back. So just FYI, if you guys were not aware. Which speaking of which. Um, we saw this just before we went live. Yep. Luckily Care Bear grabbed it for me. Um, so yeah. This is, when is this? This is March 4th launch rally. in Kane Hall yep. room in Seattle. Oh, this, this weekend. Yep. 2 PM. Uh, look down there at the bottom. You got Nick Cruz. Look at that. Filling in. Chris Hedge is going to be there. Um, Mike Forster, Griffin Ritzy. Right. Um, so look out for that. If you're in the Seattle area, um, you might show up. Um, so it's on a Saturday, like what else are you doing on a Saturday? You know? Um, but anyway, uh, moving on. So this is the, um, article Shama put out. Um, so standing in the Seattle city council chambers on February the 21st, an Indian American tech worker named Narish recalled the caste discrimination he has faced beginning at age five in India. His voice quivered with anger as he thought about the dignity denied to him. If he touched a dominant caste person, he said, <coughs> excuse me, they would claim that they needed to take a shower because they considered me untouchable. Over the course of the meeting, many other oppressed caste speakers joined Narish, sharing their own experiences with caste discrimination, often in their own workplaces in the United States. So she continues, caste is a system of oppression that divides people into a rigid hierarchy of groups based on birth with, quote, lower groups facing serious discrimination and even violence by those above them. The system originated more than 2,000 years ago in South Asia, but remains pervasive today under American capitalism, including in Seattle, a place many South Asians now call home, and where I serve as a city council member. For centuries, the caste system has been systematically used by South Asians ruling classes to divide and exploit the mass 
of ordinary people, those who are des designated as the lowest castes, historically called untouchables, were the most cruelly exploited. Today, most people in this caste system prefer the identity of Delitz, which means those who have been broken but are resilient. So, um, I did want to kind of explain the caste system a little bit, and as did Sabby, so she brought a video along with hers, but I wanted to expand upon that video a little bit. Um, so we're gonna start this, this one's short. And subscribe to get the latest alert as it relates to my content when it's posted. I became aware of the caste system based on my grandfather being born in India. As I grew up, I often wondered why Indians would at times ask me my name and make that connection to my ancestors. Really, I found out by doing 23andMe and the DNA breakdown and also Ancestry that I can confirm that the caste system is solely based on human classification. I See, this is what I was talking about before when we've showed that chart on this show where it breaks down like you know, the, the economic system in the United States, uh, this is a different one, but it's similar in the sense that like, let me go back so we can look at it a little bit better. This is what he's referring to. And please, please help us uh, bear with me. If I mispronounce, just bear with me, please. So you have the top of the pyramid, you have the bottom of the pyramid. So, so, um, we have those same pyramids here. Look at those. We yeah. brought both of them. Um, right. so, you brought this on the show before, um, because mm -hmm. you've seen it from Savvy, which this makes a lot of sense, right? I mean, Mark Page, yes. Yep. So we got your your monarchs at the top. We got Brahmins, priestly, academic class, right? Mm -hmm. So we've got the landed gentry, rulers, administrators, warriors, right? In the Kshatriyas, I think is how you pronounce that. Um. Uh, Vaishyas are artisans, tradesmen, farmers, merchants. What does that sound like, Care Bear? Uh, business. Yeah. That's corporate. Right. So then we got the manual laborers in the Shudras, right? Right. And they've got one even below that in the street cleaners, menial tasks of the Dalits, right? So... Right. The, the, that's these people. Um, right. So I also wanted to bring Misty's brought this before as well, which is a bit more in depth version of what you just saw, just made into a snake pyramid, mm -hmm. right? So um, you know, with policy distributors, policy makers, policy enforcer, policy propagandists, and policy subjects, right? So right. same sames. Um, but it's kind of why I wanted to bring this up. Do you think that this, that you could argue that capitalism itself is a caste system and could yes. be that that yes. same caste system could be like used legally if there is discrimination within it yes. for that class system? Okay. Yes, absolutely. I would like absolutely. to believe so as well. Um, but yeah, thoughts on this so far, Care Bear? I mean, it makes complete sense in terms of, you know, um, you can kind of see it here in this country. I mean, if you're not Indian, but like, yes, um, you know, in terms of who you are, I, I, like, you can see this in almost every aspect of your life, like in terms of what school you went to, in terms of what kind of job you have, in terms of like the house you have. Like we do right. this all the time. Like even certain, like I have an iPhone, like, and like, you know, like even like, like um, inanimate objects, we kind of do this. Like yeah. there's a pedestal of like, your being are the things that you own attribute to your class slash your worth. Right. And anything less than that, you know, determines usually where you are. So, but I thought we don't, we don't care. We don't want no scrub. I thought, I thought that's what it was. You know? Right. But, you know, but I think, but it's, but 
but it's under what means though you know i think that's not what we're necessarily talking about maybe we should go chasing waterfalls then colin god um but anyway um no i completely agree so but i do also want to say this too uh i'm not sure if you're going to mention this but i think the idea of like the indian community came together like in solidarity for this right like and in a place where they are they have enough power and say so to like get something done you know i think this is go ahead but it kind of makes me sad yes as a black person Mm -hmm. that we can't necessarily do the same thing in that way you know like in the way of like well two things locally this is not national this is local right you know so this is local politics so the fact that the indian community came together for this and won i think speaks you know but i think that also kind of shows to me you know i couldn't feel but feel a little sad because i wish there was that kind of solidarity you know for like my community even look there is but i don't think you know we can come collectively come together for something that for an issue that affects us in a similar way in that well, i kind think of way. i'd love to know specifics of this um if if shama ever wants to come on and speak to those specifics be more than happy um mm-hmm. Because I feel like that's not going to be talked about. This is one of those things where it's like a, not a lot of a lot of Americans are going to understand, right? Yeah. Exactly what is what is possible with what you've done, you know, um, like and and what exactly that means as far as uh, like, I you know I, I I'm just optimistic in that way, you know. I just want to yeah. see what's going to happen with this. Um, but um, to continue. Uh, Much of the American ruling class were once plantation owners who relied on the brutal system of slavery for their wealth. They they similarly promoted utterly false ideas of innate inferiority to justify their, quote, peculiar institution and the violence they used to maintain it. In every class society, the small minority whose profit from the brutal exploitation of the masses rely on ideology and division to maintain their rule. For people like Norwich and his family... The hope was of coming to the United States meant leaving caste behind. But as South Asian immigration has grown, so has the spread of caste-based discrimination. Studies from Equality Labs and the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace have found workplace caste-based discrimination to be a pervasive reality for caste-oppressed workers in the United States. Um, So last week in Seattle, our movement achieved a historic victory for workers like Narish, and for all those facing discrimination and exploitation. It was not only those born into oppressed castes who fought for our legislation, but also Muslims, Sikhs, socialists, union workers, dominant caste Hindus, and white and non-white working people. The strength and unity of our rank-and-file movement was what made it possible for Seattle to become the first city in the nation to ban caste-based discrimination, and the first outside South Asia. This is just the beginning. Casteism will not simply end because basic legal protections have been won any more than racism has ended, but it is a major step nonetheless. Our movement based itself on fighting strategies independent of the Democratic and Republican parties. For the nearly 10 years that I have been a council member, Socialist Alternative, my activist organization, and I have used our office to build movements able to wrest major victories from big business and the city's democratic establishment. We helped make Seattle the first major city to win in 15 an hour minimum wage, won our Amazon tax to fund affordable housing, and passed landmark renter's rights. The same approach was crucial in winning this week, with the movement having to overcome not only strenuous opposition from the Hindu right wing, but also opposition of a different kind from democratic politicians who in various ways threatened to kill or undermine the legislation. I'd love for you to name names there, Shama. Um, so our most ho- high-profile opponent was the Vishwa Hindu Parishad, a far-right organization tied to Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and his Baha- uh, Jesus, um, 
Bahatria Janata party, the VHP has been implicated, among other things, in the 2002 Gujarat massacre of Muslims, the right-wing Hindu American Foundation, and the Coalition of Hindus of North America also set themselves against us. Mainstream Democratic Council members were overwhelmingly not on our side in this fight and in, um, initially echoed some of the right wing's talking points, though ultimately all but one voted yes under pressure from our movement. But on the day of the vote, they hatched plans to delay or undermine the legislation. That morning, I received a phone call from one council member who said they intended to bring forward an amendment to delay the law's implementation based on a state of concern of inadequate funding for Seattle's Office of Civil Rights. It's true, this office has been shamefully and chronically underfunded by successive Democratic Party mayors and city councils, but is, in my view, unconscion uh, unconscionable for the same Democrats who have frequently opposed my efforts to tax big business to fund services. To use this pretext to demoralize oppressed caste workers and empower the right wing, said council member finally backed down. But it's a reminder how crucial it is to mobilize working people to overcome established opposition. What do you think I'm going to say about that paragraph, Colin? Or a couple of paragraphs that we've just read. Um, Shama, that's all, it's all one wing. Right. It's the same bird, lady. Like you just said it yourself. You know this. Like it's, yes, the Hindu right wing, supposedly, but what are they really? How high are they up they on that little caste system we talked about? You know, right. like it's, it's up versus down from bottom to top, <laughs> you know, like, um, but anyway, as I have said throughout my tenure as an independent socialist, we need a new party for working people and the oppressed. This has been on full display in national politics of late as self-described pro-labor President Biden was joined by both Pramila Jayapal and AOC in passing the strike baking bill against railroad workers fighting for sick leave and workplace safety. We've already seen the brutal consequences of Democrats siding with the railroad tycoons with a totally avoidable catastrophe in East Palestine, Ohio. The very fact that we are having to defend American workers against the 2,000-year-old caste system in 2023 in the wealthiest country in human history sounds once again, shows once again the bankruptcy of the capitalist system. We need a fundamentally different kind of society, one based on solidarity, equality, and democracy, run by and for working people, not billionaires. Um, for now, let's spread our victory against caste discrimination to other cities and put the new Seattle law into action by holding corporations accountable in the courts. Good luck. Good luck. I'm down for those fights. Um, yeah. What say you, so, Bear? Yeah. So a couple of things. What yeah. a way to kind of kick off her movement. Yeah. But this win. So I think what a great time for her. You know, so a huge win to her for this. And, yep. you know, and, and like she's doing this kickoff this week, you this weekend, you know, and shout out to Nick, you know, being able to say, this is what I've been able to do, but using this example to kind of show, you know, like, which again, goes with what Penny said earlier, like, you know, you have to work with different types of people in order to fight the system. Yeah. It's not going to happen just with just your bubble group. You know, you mm -hmm. have to work with different groups if they kind of align with what you're saying but there has to be education around that but then the idea is like it's the people that should be leading it like even you know like with what penny said she's under the authority of the leaders of the who movement who are black right you know she's not leading it she's being led by them mm -hmm. so in the same way kashama said this is not this is not a movement that's led by you know, corporations or like the selective, you know, organization groups that have ties to government. You know, this is led by grassroots people in Seattle. Right. And, then and it's not like it, it, it's not like it was only she she talked specifically like it was only the ones that were directly affected by this. It was also right. socialist organizations, communist organizations like so on, so forth that also came together 
you know, with their own power and, uh, you know, like... But collectively, they were right. able to do something. And I think... Yes. So... Good for them. I think, that, yeah, so great for them. But I think that shows, again, the power of local politics and what you're able to do if you're able to galvanize and people in the right way yeah. towards a common cause. And I think what is really significant is that, as she said, there were people who weren't Indian yeah. that were working in solidarity with this. So it's kind of like, if you're able to do that for, and I would argue, honestly, like it's not just in Asia, that exists in Africa too, past yeah. system. You know, mm -hmm. you can imagine in the global South that exists. Yeah, you know, I'm just Rick, wondering how much you can expand this legally to like... I, that's the other point that I want to make yeah. is that, and I mentioned this before, I think when you make a win that people clap their hands and go home. No, it's right. like the idea like... Now there's, new, there's new precedent. There's like, new precedent, but you have to keep your foot on your neck, on their yeah. neck to ensure that it stays there or you build upon them. Yeah. So it's not done once it's kind of signed into law. You have to maintain that. So you're so, saying when the serfs pick up their pitchforks and torches, King starts to listen, you know, like right. not only not are you only not that, producing for him, you know, like anyway. Right. But not, but not only that, you have to make sure <laughs> that they maintain their word and that, so really the fight is not when you win is after. Yes. It's what you Which is now. what she said. It's like, now we're going to the court to actually use this, you know? Right.